In recent years, my subjection to a certain televisual phenomena has inspired a number of personal quandaries, such as... What? When? How? Why? But not who, no, for as I sat before yonder gogglebot, subject to this audiovisual travesty, never was I so assured of who I was. In that period when Moffat's spew was t playing amongst mine synapses, the gaze of id and ego met and were locked in mutual appreciation, and the eye that previously was so elusive became clear and concrete. Yes, in my distaste and my alienation, all was illuminated and it became oh so abundantly clear exactly who I was, who I am, and who I always will be. I am an American, I mean I am a Doctor Who dissenter. I don't like Doctor Who very much anymore. Don't hurt me! Whilst I would never say that I was a fan of Doctor Who per se, I used to be kind of fond of it, you know? I watched the Eccleston and the early Tennant periods with semi-regularity, and why not? It was good, inoffensive entertainment, the spark of imagination, but as the fervour surrounding the show has intensified, it has gradually become a very different beast, and a troubling one at that. Well, once I could happily indulge from time to time, now though, gee fuckity whiz, I can't stand it. I really can't. I try to watch it. I try to watch it again and again, and every time I I want to jump up on a podium and clamour, people, this is sci-fi for idiots. But I can't say that, because it's demonstrably untrue. This show is loved globally, and its fans include those whom I hold in the highest esteem. And my eyes must deceive me, for I pick this show apart to the best of my rational analytical capacity, and every aspect of this spectacle just offends my rational sense. I swear that I'm not trying to make a conceited effort here to be contrarian, I just, I just can't see it. I feel like there must be something wrong with me, like my senses and my rational capacity must be compromised or are otherwise transmogrified by the opening Yeah! Dun -dun 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 I want to take a closer look at this show, yeah, partly to thoroughly articulate my distaste, but quite besides that, I really do think that this show warrants a thorough appraisal. The fact that this show in its current form has become such a cultural phenomenon is genuinely fascinating, and I think the global public's voracious appetite for this show's current narrative method, or lack thereof, is a indicative of way broader phenomena which I think need to be unearthed and violently interrogated. This show contains spoilers for Doctor Who. Boo. For those mercifully spared of the spectacle, the day of the Doctor is framed around the confusingly uneponymous protagonist's attempt to undo arguably his most significant deed. Preceding his rebirth as Eccleston, the Doctor fucking blew up his home planet of Gallifrey to end the Time War on account of the ever-increasing collateral damage. This genocidal act leaves the Doctor as the last surviving member of his species, but ultimately spares the rest of the universe from the increasing carnage. And now the Doctor is a bit sad and wants a do-over. Ah, oh, diddums. Despite my dickish disparagement just then, this whole new backstory they gave the Doctor, it's, it's, it's alright, you know, I can take it or leave it, it's okay. Yeah, having him so entangled in the fate of his people diminished the Doctor's outside appeal somewhat, but for, but for the effect it entailed, it's, nah, there are worse trade-offs. The common perception of the Doctor is this mystical problem solver from another world, and whilst that characterisation is certainly present in more recent portrayals, what made him interesting was the simultaneous humanity he exhibited. See, preceding the hiatus, the Doctor was portrayed with distinct fallibility that contrasted with his status as an elevated being, including, but not limited to, physical weakness, lapses in judgement, prejudice, emotional instability, and perhaps most relevantly, distinct moral ambiguity. Now drop your weapons, or I'll kill him with this deadly jelly, baby. In this, he was reminiscent of the mythological figures of Yore, who, in spite of comparative supremacy, were able to be empathised with thanks to their foibles, thus making them the viable subject of narrative. And that's why the introduction of the Time War backstory in post-hiatus Who worked, and it was congruent with what was already known of the Doctor's character as someone not above questionable, or even wicked acts, provided that it upheld the utilitarian ideal of the greatest good for the greatest number. And it provided him with genuine baggage that humanised him, made him fallible, sympathetic to the point that we root for him no matter how many women he abducts. And even with the recent severe decline in quality, the albatross around his neck that is his guilt has served as a consistently veritable source of humanising characterization. 
So if they're telling me they're going to fucking eviscerate this backstory, fucking literally retcon it from existence, they better come up with the goods, man, lest they sap the last bit of genuine appeal from the Doctor's character. And guess what they did? <laughs> they fucking blew it! Dude, they pre retcon Gallifrey it. The Day of the Doctor has no plot. It is unique in its contemptible nothingness. It managed to be both utterly garish in its over-exuberance and absolutely devoid of anything to chew on. Going to get a bit formalist here, so cover your ears. The way I see it, it is a prerequisite of any narrative in which one wishes to infuse dramatic tension that certain parameters are established, that is, the internal logic of the world portrayed and the exact limits of what the characters inside it are capable of achieving. This is fairly simple in any conventional drama that takes place in a quasi-realistic world, as we encounter the feasible limits of such a world on a day-to-day -day basis. For science fiction and fantasy, it's a little more tricky as such inherent parameters are no longer automatically applicable, and thus it falls to the writers to clarify the parameters. That is not to say that these parameters can never be crossed for narrative effect, but in any narrative that centres around a particular dilemma or problem, the clear specification of these limits are an absolute necessity if the quest for the solution is to have any gravity. In summary, in a fantastical show of this kind, the limits of what is possible have to be clearly defined in order for the attempts at dramatic tension to carry any genuine weight. If we have no clear understanding of why a dilemma or problem seems insurmountable, then we have no reason to get invested in the character's attempts to, uh, surmount it? Hey, is that a word? Yeah. Alright. And in Doctor Who, man, honest to God, anything goes. This is a fervent problem with the show, one that is especially ubiquitous throughout the more recent seasons. There is, there is no sense of what is possible, or rather what is impossible. Too often an episode ends with a brief spout of technobabble, a turning of a TARDIS knob, or the faint buzz of a sonic screwdriver. Poof! Instant solution. And though cleverly disguised with the aforementioned events, it ultimately constitutes a deus ex machina. I won't waste your time explaining this literary device, but outside more consistently esoteric work, I count it among the least imaginative ways of ending a story. On account of the lack of any consistent logic grounding the proceedings, Doctor Who is free to commit this narrative faux pas again and again. And not only is the day of the Doctor no exception, it is the epitome of this lazy approach. So get this, the Doctor, in his current incarnation, is portrayed as the god in the machine. Only the machine is the narrative he is a part of. The Doctor is portrayed like... like god. Oh my god, Eureka! Eureka! But whoa, 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 so wait a second, wait a second, wait a second dude. What, what is the implications of such a, of this deistic portrayal? Well, good sirs and good ladies. Oh, that playback bar is getting oddly close to the edge. Oh no. Oh no! Ah!